हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू फाइनेट एलिमेंट मेथड कोर्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस टाइप्स ऑफ इलास्टिसिटी प्रॉब्लम्स देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ इलास्टिसिटी प्रॉब्लम्स फर्स्ट वन इज प्लेन स्ट्रेस प्रॉब्लम देन प्लेन स्ट्रेन प्रॉब्लम एंड एक्सेसिमेट्रिक प्रॉब्लम्स वील डिस्कस दिस प्रॉब्लम्स इन डिटेल वन बाय वन फर्स्ट इज प्लेन स्ट्रेस प्रॉब्लम विच प्रॉब्लम्स आर कॉल्ड एज प्लेन स्ट्रेस प्रॉब्लम इन इलास्टिसिटी सो प्रॉब्लम इन विच प्रॉब्लम और यू कैन से स्ट्रक्चर अ प्रॉब्लम इन विच वन डायमेंशन इज वेरी स्मॉल रिमेंबर दिस वन डायमेंशन इज वेरी स्मॉल कंपेयर टू अदर टू डायमेंशंस दोज प्रॉब्लम्स और दो स्ट्रक्चर्स आर कॉल्ड एज प्लेन स्ट्रेस प्रॉब्लम अ प्रॉब्लम इन विच वन डायमेंशन इज वेरी स्मॉल कंपेयर टू अदर टू डायमेंशंस दोज प्रॉब्लम्स आर कॉल्ड एज प्लेन स्ट्रेस प्रॉब्लम द बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल ऑफ प्लेन स्ट्रेस इज थीन प्लेट थीन प्लेट मीन्स यू कैन से स्लैब और एनी पैनल प्लेट लाइक स्ट्रक्चर विच हैज लेंथ एंड विड्थ लाइक दिस बट इफ यू लुक एट द थिकनेस ऑफ प्लेट और थिकनेस ऑफ पैनल दिस थिकनेस इज वेरी स्मॉल कंपेर्ड टू लेंथ एंड विड्थ ऑफ द प्लेट देर फोर थीन प्लेट और एनी पैनल इज अ बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल ऑफ प्लेन स्ट्रेस प्रॉब्लम ओके इन प्लेन स्ट्रेस प्रॉब्लम स्ट्रेसेस इन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ स्मॉल डायमेंशंस आर ऑलवेज जीरो और निग्लिजिबल स्ट्रेसेस इन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ स्मॉल डायमेंशन जनरली नॉर्मली जेड डायरेक्शन इज रिप्रेजेंटेड स्मॉल डायमेंशन दैट इज थिकनेस ऑफ द प्लेट इफ यू लुक एट दिस इफ यू टेक इन टू कंस्ट्रेशन दिस थिन प्लेट दिस इज लेंथ ए राइट दिस इज ए एंड दिस इज बी विथ एंड थिकनेस दैट इज टी और एच एनी नोटेशन यू कैन यूज इट इज इन द जेड डायरेक्शन सो द डायरेक्शन इन विच द डायमेंशन इज वेरी स्मॉल इन दैट डायरेक्शन स्ट्रेसेस आर ऑलवेज जीरो सो इफ जेड डायरेक्शन रिप्रेजेंट द स्मॉल डायमेंशन देन सिग्मा जेड ताउ एक्स जेड एंड ताउ वाई जेड आर इक्वल टू जीरो प्लीज रिमेंबर सिंस I have shown here z direction in the thickness direction. That's why these stresses, which has a z coordinate, those are become zero. If I use the different direction, for example, if I assume thickness direction by x, if I represent, and other two dimensions I represent by y and z. In that case, stresses in x direction will be zero. that's why here what i have noted in plane stress problem stresses in the direction of small dimensions so that direction may be any direction but generally that direction is taken as a z direction that's why here sigma z tau x z tau y z are equal to 0 those are in z direction okay that is the second point related to the plane stress problem that is stresses in z direction are equal to 0 third point is if tau xz and tau yz are equal to 0 then ultimately gamma xz and gamma yz are equal to 0 because gamma is equal to 1 upon g into tau this is the stress strain relation for shear strain and shear stress one dimensional hooks law so if tau is equal to 0 your gamma will be equal to 0 so if st shear stresses are zero then shear strains are equal to zero but if sigma z equal to 0 though the sigma z equal to 0 but epsilon z is not equal to 0 in plain stress problem the value of epsilon z is equal to minus mu upon 1 minus mu in bracket epsilon x plus epsilon y this is the value of epsilon z in terms of epsilon x and epsilon y therefore please remember 
दो सिग्मा जेड इक्वल टू जीरो बट इप्सलॉन जेड इज नॉट इक्वल टू जीरो सो दीज आर द फोर पॉइंट यू टू रिमेम्बर वाइल राइटिंग दी इंफॉर्मेशन और नोट ऑन प्लेन स्ट्रेस प्रॉब्लम वट आर दोज फोर पॉइंट फर्स्ट इज वट इज डेफिनेशन ऑफ प्लेन स्ट्रेस a problem in which one dimension is very small compared to other two dimensions are called as plain stress problem the best example of plain stress is thin plate where thickness is very small compared to the length and width second point in plain stress problem stresses in the direction of small dimension which is normally taken as a z direction so stresses in z direction are zero so sigma z tau xz tau yz are equal to 0 if tau xz and tau yz are equal to 0 therefore shear strain gamma xz gamma yz are also equal to 0 but do sigma z equal to 0 but epsilon z is not equal to 0 in plain stress its value is this the last point about the plain stress problem is what is hooke's law for the plane stress problem so this is the hooks law for plane stress problem you will find this hooks law in any book sigma x sigma y tau xy only these three stress component will present because there is no tau xz there is no tau yz there is no sigma z out of six stress component three stress components are zero so using generalized hooks law and putting these stresses are equal to zero we'll get this value of stresses so which are written in matrix form here okay so this is first elasticity problem that is plane stress problem now second is plane strain problem so the definition of plane strain is exactly opposite to the plane stress a problem in which or a structure in which one dimension is very large in plane stress it was very small in plane strain it is very large a problem in which one dimension is very large compared to other two dimensions are called as plane strain problem this is plane stress not plane stress plane strain problem okay a problem in which one dimension is very large compared to other two dimensions are called as plane strain problems example retaining wall deck slab of the bridge you can say cylinders towers chimney there are many example where one dimension is very large compared to other two dimensions for example here if you look at the two figures one is retaining wall so compared to height of retaining wall and width of retaining wall if you look at the length of retaining wall it is infinitely long compared to its height and width so it comes under plane strain problem similarly if you look at this infinite plate for example deck slab of the bridge so this is walking width you can say this is width of the deck slab right this is thickness of deck slab but length of the deck slab is infinitely long compared to this width and thickness so this deck slab of bridge if you look at the ch chimney or tower which has a very long height compared to the diameter of base or diameter of the chimneys or cylinder so these are all examples of plane strain this is first point that is definition then example then like plane stress problem in plane strain problems strains in the direction of large dimension are zero so here the long dimension is represented as a z right it means strains in z direction are equal to zero which strains are there in z direction epsilon z gamma xz gamma yz so these these strains are equal to zero in plane strain problem if gamma xz gamma yz are equal to 0 then tau xz and tau yz are also equal to 0 similar to plane stress but again in plane strain also do epsilon z equal to 0 but sigma z is not equal to 0 so sigma z is equal to mu into sigma x plus sigma y 
so similar four points here to discuss in plain stream first is about the definition a problem in which one dimension is very large compared to other two dimensions are called as plain strain problem example retaining wall or bridge deck slab in plain strain problems strains in the direction of large dimension which is normally z direction so strains in z direction are equal to 0 that is epsilon z equal to gamma xz equal to gamma yz equal to 0 if gamma xz and gamma yz are 0 then tau xz and tau yz are equal to 0 but those epsilon z equal to 0 but sigma z is not equal to 0 sigma z is equal to mu into sigma x plus sigma y and this is the two dimensional Hooke's law for plane strain problem this is plane strain not plane stress plane strain problem ok so this is the Hooke's law which is also available in the many books you can refer that the third and last problem in elasticity is axisymmetric problem this is a special type of problem right axisymmetric structures or axisymmetric problems are those in which the structures can be generated by rotating a line or curve about an axis a structure which can be generated by rotating a line or curve about an axis is called as axisymmetric structure for example cylinder if you look at the cylinder if cylinder is like this right this is cylinder now if you want to form this cylinder which is symmetric about this vertical axis right it is called as axis of symmetry so if you select one rectangular curve or plane and if you rotate this by 360 degree if you rotate this by 360 degree then you will get a cylinder it means cylinder is formed by rotating this one plane about 360 degree you will get a cylinder if you want to uh, uh, construct or draw a dome how we are drawing this is also symmetric about the vertical axis so if you select one line curve like this this plane only and if you rotate this about 360 degree about the vertical axis you will get a dome so any structure which is formed by rotating a line or curve about an axis especially vertical axis those are called as axis symmetric problems examples are cylinder and dome it is in axis symmetric problem normally load is acting a uniform pressure is acting inside internally as well as externally right mainly these structures are subjected to uniform internal or external pressure uniform self weight or live load uniform over the surface right the advantages of axis symmetric problems is since those are symmetric th those axis symmetric problems are simple for the analysis so the advantage of symmetry may be made use to simplify the analysis right so because of symmetry we can solve the half of the structure only no need to solve the complete structure we can use the symmetry we can solve the half of the structure and we can assume that the analysis of the whole structure the one more point to be remember in axisymmetric problem that cylindrical coordinates are used for the formulation of axisymmetric problems cylindrical coordinate that is r and theta next point is because of symmetry the stress components are independent of angular coordinate that is theta coordinate since axisymmetric structures are symmetric about the vertical axis the many stress component of axisymmetric problems are independent of theta coordinate that is angular coordinate therefore whatever derivatives with respect to theta are coming in the axisymmetric formulations those are vanish and treated as a zero so in axisymmetric problems gamma r theta gamma theta z tau r theta and tau theta z these strain and stress quantities are considered as zero there is no stresses in the theta direction 
therefore in axisymmetric problems there are only four non zero strains components are present only four non zero strain component those are epsilon r that is strain in radial direction epsilon theta strain in angular direction then epsilon z that is strain in thickness direction and gamma rz that is shear strain epsilon r equal to du by dr epsilon theta equal to u upon r epsilon z equal to dw by dz all these strain displacement relations are available in the theory of elasticity books similarly hooke's law for axisymmetric problem is given like this okay sigma r sigma z sigma theta and tau rz there are four stress components stress in radial direction stress in z direction stress in angular direction and tau shear stress first three are normal stresses then shear stress which are related with the strain component epsilon r epsilon z epsilon theta and gamma rz so these are the three elasticity problems their definitions examples and the hooke's law i hope all of you understand what are what are the different types of elasticity problems in the next class we will solve the next we'll see the next topic of finite element method thank you thank you very much